The remains of the Romanovs are buried in St. Petersburg. The official version is one and according to it no one approached the graves. Although some sources, including well-known historians, say the opposite at least about the looting of the graves. There were eyewitnesses, whose testimonies surfaced here and there over time. We are talking about the post-revolutionary period. Presumably, the tombs of the Romanov dynasty contained something of value to the Bolsheviks. But what exactly could be found in them? That's what we'll talk about. If you also love history and want to develop subscribe to the channel. And remember, your likes and comments are a stimulus for the development of this channel, so don't forget about them. The tombs in the cathedral and their looting. The first to be buried in the Peter and Paul Cathedral was the two-year-old daughter of Peter the Great, and then Peter himself. Behind him were many members of the imperial families who ended up there after leaving our world. The February Revolution took place. The government was changed, and the provisional government ordered the confiscation of all the jewels that were in the tombs. From icons with precious frames to lamps, medals and wreaths. There were a large number of items made with gold, silver and other precious metals. Those were quickly removed from the graves and shipped to the capital, packaged in crates. However, since about the same time, there has been no information about these items. One version says that the confiscation was carried out later, in the 21st year of that century. But already by the Bolsheviks, the pretext for it was to help the starving. The tombs were opened with special sacrilege. On the other hand, this fact has not been documented at all. But there were many witnesses, so there are a lot of words of eyewitnesses. An emigrant from the Soviet Union saw the text of a letter to a prominent member of the GPU, and he provided the latter for a Krakow newspaper. There it described in detail the process of opening the tomb of Alexander III the embalmed corpse of the Tsar was in good condition. Alexander III himself in the tomb was in a general's uniform, literally covered with orders. They removed the remains, then removed the rings from his fingers, followed by the orders, because they were covered with diamonds. And the body of the Tsar was sent to another coffin, of oak. The secretary drew up a protocol listing the items found on Alexander III. Then the tomb was closed and seals were put on it, wrote Boris Nikolaevich. Presumably, the tombs of Alexander II and Nicholas I suffered the same fate everything was taken from there. But only the opening of Paul's tomb horrified the members of the commission. What distinguished the tomb of Paul I despite the perfectly preserved uniform, the rest of what they saw was not for the faint of heart. Because the face of the murdered Paul I was covered with a wax mask, that for the long years of stay of the body in the coffin, had time to melt. And the members of the commission discovered a horrifying picture with a disfigured face, he had been badly beaten before his death. The tomb of Catherine the Great was also a source of joy it turned out to be the richest in decorations. But Peter the Great himself was also on the line, whose tomb it was problematic to open. And so, having opened it, the commission was once again taken aback. This time for another reason because of the perfectly preserved face of Peter the Great and the position of his body. The coffin was upright, and he appeared before them as if alive. It looked so natural that they recoiled in fear. To this day, the valuables are believed to be missing. 